it's a time of the harvest. It's a beginning of fall and plants in the garden are making their fruits and seeds and bulbs so they can go to sleep and be reborn in the spring. I can harvest the vegetables that I planted, cared for and watered all spring and summer. It's a beautiful time and I want to be present for it. But it's never just harvest. Life always goes in circles and there's always things to just do and things to just enjoy. Often people in the Western society don't really have balance between those two. And I am unfortunately sometimes no exception. I don't have a garage, so I have to prepare my wooden panels with gesso for the winter. I have to do it outside and in a month it will be too cold. I have ADHD, but I didn't know that until recently. And I always wondered why it is so hard for me to paint. I feel like I am a painter at heart. I have those visions in my head and I want to express them, I want to paint them. But it's so hard to paint for me a lot of the times. and. Since I found out that I have ADHD and I found out what that means, I feel much more in control of my life. And that really shows in my painting process, because I am trying to model it by my needs and by how my brain works. In the past, I always procrastinated and focusing on tasks was super hard for me. I put them off and when I went painting a bigger or a more complex scene or a scene that I am not that familiar with, I was just distracted and I made layers that didn't really work and were really rough and not right and then I had to go back and fix them over and over again, layer by layer. And it was a really long, time-consuming, not optimal process and I didn't really enjoy it. But I didn't really know that my brain just don't work good with this process and that there is a process probably that works much better for me and there is a way that I can paint quicker, more optimal and that I can actually enjoy the painting process. In the past I just made this rough layer and then I had to fix it and there was a focus involved with how to fix it, with thinking how to fix it and trying and failing and it was a whole deal to fix my previous layers and I didn't really make the first layer work for me. And now I decided I will try a different approach and I started painting my first layer way more focused and precise. So I put a lot of attention in my first layer and I also take a lot of breaks between painting. That means that I get a really detailed first layer that already looks kind of good to me, so I have this motivation to paint forward and it doesn't look such a mess that I feel discouraged because I know I will have to fix everything and just put a lot of effort into how to clean it up.
and I also need to take a lot of breaks. Balance between work and personal time and switching tasks is crucial for me. I usually can't paint for more than one hour and I have to switch tasks, but also sometimes be totally without tasks. And that is probably one of the hardest things for me. For the breaks between painting sessions, I really like to choose taking care of my health, my food and household because those tasks are so healing for me. Right here I am making kombucha, which is a fermented drink that I make at home. It's really good for my health and also it is a sweet fruity drink, so it's kind of a healthy treat for me. I really like sweet drinks, so it's really good for me that I drink kombucha instead of coke, for example. I really polished this first layer for the house, so I decided I will move on to the background. And you can finally see what this painting is becoming. It's a fairy tale cottage in the forest beside the river. And the name of the painting is The Dreamer's Cottage. Sometimes I can paint hours on end, but there comes a day when I can only do it for 20 minutes. And then I don't have focus and energy anymore. In the past I would force myself, but nowadays I try to listen to my body and a lot of the times when this resistance go away and I say, okay, I don't have to paint, that later I quickly want to go back to painting. So a lot of times for me, it's just that I don't want to have to do it. I don't want to be pressured into it. And when I'm nice to myself, I often want to go back to work and to painting. And then I can really enjoy it. My garden is a perfect in-between task and it's my perfect healthy space. I never go from the garden with worse headspace than I came in with. It's so healing and dopamine inducing to grow my own food. With my own compost soil and without any pesticides or other chemicals. It's just me and my vegetables, sometimes a little eaten by the slugs and bugs, but that's okay, we can share. I won't be having this garden for long, so it's a challenge for me to not attach and enjoy right now in this moment. Really work on it for the now. When I live a life and do other tasks and don't force myself to only work all the time, I have much more creative energy and I'm much happier. Really 
recently I've been listening to this interesting podcast and it was about artists that have to have a free time because they can only get experiences to then pour into their art in their free time and that artist that is always making art cannot make good art because good art comes from living if you are just working all the time uh, and you're a workaholic and you cannot live then nothing happens to you from where you can get inspiration for great art and I really agree with it I can see that when I live and when I enjoy my life my art becomes way more enjoyable and in my opinion way better to look at. I also have better ideas and I can focus more on my art. In the past I've been a hustler and I have worked myself way too much and I'm really happy with the headspace I'm in right now. It's not perfect, I don't have a perfect balance between work and free time, but at least I am aware of its importance and I'm always trying. I have made those two paintings last week. I wanted to make something quick to express myself quicker because with bigger paintings it takes so much time to express an idea and because of that sometimes I get this urge to do something quickly. Also the social media is a factor here because if I just do big paintings and no small paintings in between I post like once every three weeks and then no one sees my posts. So I try to have also this balance between small quick paintings and bigger pieces and I enjoy both those two for other reasons. But yeah, I really enjoy those two paintings. This one is called an evening garden and the other one is called a mysterious forest. I made quick reels about their processes and about their meanings on my Instagram, so you can check that out. You can also check out my Etsy shop where I sell my originals, prints and stickers and I pour my love into every product I make and I package and ship them all by myself and I am always grateful for your support. But if you can't support me there, don't worry. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you liked it. I hope you like my honesty and those bits of life that I share with you and I will see you again soon in another video. I wish you a lovely day and happy arting! <laughs>